Hello, I'm Steven, and today I'm going to talk about art and fear. Facing fear as an artist, and maybe facing some fears about art for um, those of you that are art lovers. Uh, I was giving a lecture recently at a community college, and our, our college in the community, actually, a state college, and one of the students after my guest lecture raised her hand and said, how do you face fear as an artist? My response was, I face fear every day, frequently. You know, I face fear with every new project that I launch, with every, if I'm launching, a, whether that's a YouTube channel or a series of paintings, or you're standing there at an art show, hoping that the show works well economically and that you can connect with people and hopefully make sales. I actually have a friend who gets sick to his stomach uh, at most of the art shows that he does. I won't share his name. Wonderful guy. It wouldn't strike you out. He seems um, completely confident. But fear is a very real thing that we face because art is so personal. And I think fear is a large part of you know the crazy, challenging, exciting problem of being a human. So. <clears throat> I wasn't really satisfied with my answer when I walked away. I felt like maybe I had dismissed the question a little bit. The answer wasn't wrong, but it's basically, yeah, you have fear, you have to face it. And that's not a great answer for how do you face fear. So I, I thought about it a lot after that interaction. Why do we face fear? Why is fear such a commonly, com so commonly associated with art? And why do so many artists get paralyzed by fear? And I really have broken it down. It has a lot to do with status and how we measure up. I know a lot of people that are not necessarily artists or practitioners that they are interested in art, but they actually are, you know, very uncertain about coming to an art show because they're afraid if they don't get it. If they go to the museum and they don't like Picasso or if they go to an art fair and they don't connect with an artist, they feel like maybe it's their fault. And, and we as an, an art community have maybe built up kind of a, a poisonous uh, society of communication where uh, it's the beholder's fault. And we're communicating, so if you don't get what I'm doing, it may be because it's not for you, or it may be because I missed the mark. But it's not because you're wrong. It's my responsibility to communicate the things that matter to at least my tribe, to the people that, that matter to me. And uh, so I think a, a lot of our fears come down to that status. Do we measure up? Does our audience respond? Does the work that we do matter? And will people care about it? And there's three things kind of under that status problem that also cause fear or demotivation. One is a lack of audience or a lack of connection. The second is a lack of skill. And the third is a lack of purpose. So just taking them one at a time and then I won't have a tip, a trick, or a quick three-step process to get over fear. But I will have some of my thoughts about how we can get at that underlying problem of status and ego and move forward as artists and as people at the end. So the fear, a lack of audience is a major demotivator for creating artwork because if I bring artwork into the world and there is no response, there could be a feeling that maybe the art itself didn't matter. That's why most artists, I actually think there's statistics that a vast majority of artists don't create artwork outside of the academic setting because it's a setting where it's structured that it matters. As soon as you leave that cocoon, you have to go out and find your people, find the people that the artwork matters to. And that's not always an easy process. It also can sort of reveal that maybe you're not as, we're afraid to reveal that we are not as significant as we hope we are, right? So 
if I make a piece and post it on Instagram and I get one like and my friend gets 50 likes, are they 50 times as important as me? The answer is obviously no, but our ego still feels like that status drop and it's a lot easier to hide in a closet and it's easier still to stop making art. That's why most people don't collect art or push it to, or push it to the side. But for those of us that care about it and want to push through this fear, it's good to at least recognize that a lack of audience can be a major demotivator. So finding your people, even if it's just a few people, that give you a reason to get into the studio and create every day, that can be very helpful. The second major problem is our fear is up here when our skills are down here. So I have uh, still I'm not the most confident of being behind a camera directing people but when I was in college I had a number of projects that I really needed models for and I was so uncertain of how to pose models and how to deal with models and how to prepare for models and how to um, get the costumes for these illustrations and, and artwork that I was creating that I postponed for a long time going through that process even though it was just friends, I was like, when I get them, I won't know how to pose them, and then, you know, I'm taking time out of their day, and then the pictures won't turn out, and the art won't turn out. And it was something that seems like a very small thing, but because my skill was so low, because I had no competence at all, I'd never done it before, my fear was up here. And just facing into that one photo shoot, even though it didn't solve all those problems, it, it gave me this toehold of if I can do it once, I can repeat it. And if I can do it fairly well, I can do it better in the future. Uh, G.K. Chesterton said, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. And that's such an important thing for us artists to remember because you're not going to get it right the first time. But as your skills go up, at least in that domain, your fear is going to go down because we're often afraid of things. Uh, fear is your body's way of reminding your brain that it doesn't know what it's doing. So you can get drowned out and stop, but if you bring your skills up, your fears inevitably go down. The third thing is a lack of purpose. Uh, why are you making art? Why are you creating? Why are you engaging with the creative um, community as a client, as a collector, as a collaborator, as an artist? It doesn't have to be something fantastic doesn't have to be that you're saving the global environment. It could be that you're trying to make gorgeous, aesthetic landscape paintings that don't have like an extremely uh, sophisticated concept underlying them, but it still matters in that you're making the corner of the world that cares about aesthetic landscapes, you're making that corner of the world richer and better. Um, it could be, for me, I'm trying to tell stories, even if it's just in the context of an individual painting, I'm trying to tell stories masterfully. I'm trying to understand story and composition and create this rich world for that small segment of the population that really cares about images and really cares about stories and can talk about the work and engage with the work. When the work goes on the wall, it's not something that you can you know, walk by. It's gonna be a little quirky. So 99% of people, are my audience. And those 1%, half of them might not like the way that I approach things. But for my people, for this small tribe of those art lovers, my work means something to them and it means a lot to me. Now, it also is something that I'm trying to pursue because I think I can be good at it and I think I can, I'm very passionate about it. Then the economics, because this is how I support my family, that's a great motivator to get into the studio. I have a lot of purposes for my work. I'm not saying this to make the, it about me, but uh, for you, you have to have something you're trying to communicate. You have to have someone you're trying to share with. You have to care about your audience. You have to care about s at least one component. You at least have to care about the economics or the content or the audience. And ideally, you want to care about all three. But these all, in a sense, tie back to how do you measure up? That's why we're scared. We're afraid that we're going to fall short or that people are going to realize that we're not as significant as we wish we were. And that comes down to something that has helped me a lot that is not a technique or an exercise or a, you know, a three-point plan that's easy to do. 
it's not a gimmick at all. It's a process that's more psychological or even spiritual, which is taking your work more seriously and taking yourself more lightly. So it's, you're, you're taking your work incredibly seriously. If you're trying to grow social media, grow social media. If you're trying to make a great painting, make a great painting. Connect with people. But you have to have the humility to let go of the challenges that you meet along the way. As a collector, um, you have to tr allow yourself to trust your instincts without worrying about being judged by the people around you. If you put a piece of work on your wall, if you paint something and say, this is what I care about, this reflects at least part of who I am, uh, it might be more painful if someone else doesn't care about it like you do, but it's okay. It matters if it's the thing that you care about. Uh, I, I've been, a note, too, for us creatives is it's not about you. It's about bringing meaning to that corner of the world that cares about what you care about. You're trying to communicate value to other people. You're trying to bring joy, bring meaning to that corner of the world. It doesn't matter if 99% of people don't care. It doesn't matter if some people hate it. It's not about you. It's about bringing meaning to your audience. So I hope that was valuable. I, I hope that uh, it was entertaining at least. If you're an art lover, a collector, a creator, a uh, creative person, someone that loves to talk and think about art, uh, this channel might be for you. Go ahead and hit the subscribe. I'll, I'll put my Instagram and stuff below too. And I'd love to hear your comments. How do you face fear? And if you're a creative person or a collector, let me know if there's a, a piece of art or a direction that you've been postponing because you're afraid. I'd love to hear that and connect with you in the comments below. See you soon.